nigga. We don't give a fuck about their family. They don't give a fuck about ours. You're celebrities. And all the people in the dominant society are on code about this. You don't see any white people standing up for Kyrie right now, knowing he didn't do anything wrong. He did nothing wrong. You see? They got a code and we don't. The people that they've been pushing out in the media to go after Kyrie and talk about him are the buck dancing, butter biscuit eating Negroes. And why don't we have a code? Because we don't have an economic base. We have to incentivize people to stay on code. Codification is a must. That's why we have to be together on the same page, on the same accord, and vibe with each other and understand that we have to be in the mindset of empowering each other when we come among each other. That's one of the reasons why we're having the rally for reparations this weekend so we can be around like-minded people so that the code can start formulating. When you're around like-minded people, that's when you start formulating a code, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean like-minded people who have an agenda, not just be around niggas. You see, when you're just around niggas just to be around them and there's no agenda, there's not going to be a code. And then what happens is everybody gets off code. That's what happens when cats go to dice games and little gambling spots. And then all of a sudden people start getting shot. I'm not, I'm not going to even go into that whole narrative again. Hey, what's going on, family and visitors? Peace and blessings to you all. Welcome to the Telescope channel. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell in the bottom corner. Here at the Telescope channel, we're going to be diving in from everything from music to religion, sports, and all other current events. Subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated. Let's go get it in. responsibility for posting that some things that were questionable in there untrue like i said in the first time you guys asked me when i was sitting on that stage i don't believe everything that everybody posts it's a documentary so i take my responsibility like episode one to hear the word i apologize or in your mind you said i didn't mean to cause any harm were you apologizing or not i didn't mean to cause any harm i'm not the one that made the documentary I think uh, some of the criticism of the Jewish faith and the community, for sure. Some points made in there that were uh, unfortunate. Tyree, are you surprised that you did hurt people? Uh, surprised that I did hurt people? Are you surprised that the action, some of the things that you did, hurt people? Yeah, I, I think I can ask a better question. It's just, where were you when I was uh, a kid, figuring out that uh, 300 million of my ancestors are buried in America? Where were you guys asking those same questions when I was a kid dealing with learning about the traumatic events of my familial history and what I'm proud to come from and why I'm proud to stand here and why when I repeat myself that I'm not going to stand down, it has nothing to do with dismissing any other race or group of people. I'm just I'm proud of my heritage and what we've been through and uh, the fact that this is pinned me against the Jewish community and uh, I'm here answering questions of whether or not I'm sorry or not on something I didn't create and it was something I shared and I'm telling everybody I'm taking responsibility and that's where I sit. So, you know, these same questions that you guys ask, me dealing with it as being a melanated, pigmented person all around the world and dealing with racial biases against my skin color, demeaning me because of my religious beliefs, and I'm still sitting in the seat standing. So, um, I take my full responsibility. Again, I'll repeat it, posting something on my Instagram or Twitter that may have had some unfortunate falsehoods in it. But I also am a human being that's 30 years old and I've been growing up in a country that's told me that I wasn't worth anything and I came from a slave class. And I come from a people that are meant to be treated the way we get treated every day. So I'm not here to compare anyone's atrocities or tragic events that their families have dealt with generations of time. I'm just here to continue to expose things that our world continues to put in darkness. I'm a light, I'm a beacon of light. That's what I'm here to do. If you guys ask me questions about basketball, I give you my expert opinion. If you guys ask me about other things, I give you my opinion and it's met with whatever you believe the perception or the deception is. You guys investigate my life every day and you justify it by serving your own purpose, which I honor. I would like the same respect in return, figuring out just like anyone else. So please keep that same energy when we're talking about anti other things, because just because I post a document doesn't mean I'm anti-Semitic and doesn't mean I'm automatically standing with everyone that is believing in it. So, it's unfortunate timing that we're in, but I'm glad that I can stand on the truth because I'm not afraid of these mics, these cameras. I used to be looking everyone in the eye and telling them the truth. And I'm proud of who I am. Any label that you put on me, I'm able to dismiss because I study. I know the Oxford Dictionary, you look it up, right? It's one of the biggest mistakes I had in 
being a kid was not knowing European or Western language. So I started looking it up and understanding the definitions and why they say, if you want to trick a black person, put it in a book. I was wondering my whole life why they said that. Now I'm 30 years old and I know reading is a superpower. This helps me understand where I'm going and where I come from. It's like a tree with roots. Can I read the, the documentary listed among the falsehoods? It said the Holocaust didn't happen. Do Again, you those falsehoods happened? are unfortunate. And it's not that I don't believe in the Holocaust. I never said that. I never, ever have said it. It's not come out of my mouth. I never tweeted it. I never liked anything like it. So the Holocaust in itself is an event that means something to a large group of people that suffered something that could have been avoided. No one said we had to practice racism. No one said we had to treat each other like garbage. No one said that I had to stand here today and understand that many people that come from generations 60 years ago, 40 years ago, enslaved some of my ancestors still, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, and it's still going on. You guys are asking me, respectfully, to speak on something that was a documentary that I had nothing to do with. I didn't make it. So, just please keep that same energy when you guys are addressing me. Perry, what record do you have an anti-Semitic belief? Again, I'm gonna repeat. I don't know how the label becomes justified because you guys ask me the same questions over and over again, but this is not gonna turn into a spin around cycle of questions upon questions. I told you guys how I felt. I respect all walks of life and embrace all walks of life. That's where I sit. I think what people wanna hear though is just a yes or no on that question. Yes or no. I, I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. I was informed that they wanted to have a meeting and we handled it. Kyrie, speaking of the get us in place mindset, um, an ambassador, an Israeli ambassador to the UN, what's his name? Let me find that tweet. Hold on, let me let me show y'all the tweet of what this guy said. Don't tell me this ain't some plantation talk. Let me put it in the jumbotron. Hold on. Hold on. Let me put this in the jumbotron if I can find it real quick right here. Okay, hold on. Right here, let me put this up. All right, it's in the Jumbotron. This is Ambassador Gilad Erdin. He said, the Nets are showing no tolerance for hate. We can't pick and choose when we want to stand against injustice. Kyrie hopped on the trend of being anti-Semitic and was put in his place quickly. I hope he opened his eyes beyond the conspiracy theories he spreads and can educate himself. What? He was put in his place? the fuck this dude talking about marinate with that for a minute Kyrie was put in his place what's his place what's our place what do you mean put in his place what the hell is our place this is plantation talk black folks stand up against this type of stuff these people are trying to make us bow down and submit put in your place what kind of talk is that they damn sure didn't put Bezos in his place, and he's the one who's selling and profiting off of this movie. Nobody's saying anything to Jeff Bezos. Not only are they not saying anything to Jeff Bezos, who's profiting off the movie. Let's reiterate that. And the movie is popular now. <clears throat> the movie is like number one. The book about the movie is number one. Jeff Bezos' company is making money off that movie. Kyrie is not profiting off that. <clears throat> Kyrie didn't spread any theories. But here's the thing. Not only is Bezos profiting and nobody's saying anything, do y'all know that the NBA, they're trying to get a streaming deal right now? And they are partially in negotiations, I think, with Amazon. They're in, um, I think they're in negotiations now with Amazon to have some streaming service going on. They got a billion dollar streaming deal that they're trying to get popping with either Amazon or Apple TV. So there are negotiations with Jeff Bezos now. So it, this movie can't be that damn bad if you guys are cool with Bezos selling it and you're trying to do billions of dollars worth of business with this guy. You're going to skip over all that, but attack the, the black person. This is when we see it. And we better understand that this could happen to you, family. Always be prepared for this type of stuff. Hey, what's going on? This is Tariq Nasheed, and I am in Washington, D.C. right now at Freedom Plaza. This is the location where we're going to have the FBA rally for reparations on Saturday, November 5th, 2022. We got Dr. Boyce Watkins, Teslin Figaro, Riza Islam, 
Professor James Small, Dr. Kaba, so many phenomenal people and many, many more. This is the most important rally that we've had in modern American history because this is the first time that we've gotten together as a group collectively to come to the powers that be and demand specific tangibles for foundation of black Americans. You don't want to miss this, ladies and gentlemen. So be here, Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C., November 5th, 2022. For more information, go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. Hey, remember, they said it. Now we're speaking on it. I'm at the telescope. You're now watching the telescope channel. Hey, man, you know, I had to post a feel-good video, man. You know, the feel-good intro for y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mr. Telescope is definitely here. And remember, they said it. Now we speaking on it. It's Telescope Channel. Um, I'm feeling real good, man. You know, it's almost November 5th. The rally going to be tomorrow, the reparation rally. Salute to all my FBA family out there. Peace and blessings to the tribe. Y'all know how we start everything off. Um, I posted a couple of videos because... I did want to talk about the Kyrie situation. I posted Tariq um, point of view or perspective, you know, on, on the situation. And then, you know, I posted the brother uh, rally because he's going to have the rally tomorrow or whatever. So I posted that. That's going to probably be a sight to see. I hope to see them boys live and, you know, out there in effect. I wish I could have made it, but I'm, you know, I'm way out here in the West Bubble fuck with, with my daughter and my wife, you know what I'm saying, handling so, business. So, with that being said, you know what I'm saying, I'll be showing love, giving love, and sending love and good spirits and blessings from afar. You know what I'm saying? Um, man, I wish them boys the best, but I want to touch on the Kyrie situation real quick. What y'all think about the Kyrie situation? Like, I thought it was very spooky that they would just kept on asking the man to apologize. I, I don't really feel like it was that deep. You know, they just kept on reiterating, like, so is that a yes or a no? Is that a yes or a no? Like, they, I don't know if they had a previous conversation. You know, they probably could have had a previous conversation, whatever rabbi or management that he talked to, you know, behind the scenes. They probably could have been like, what, whatever, you can have your beliefs, you just don't say that publicly, you know, whatever. I guess, you know, in a sense of control. So, I guess by Kyrie, you know, going against that, they felt like, or standing on his beliefs, they felt like, you know, he he's uh pretty much being a thorn in our in our behind and going to like he 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 trying to be rebellious, you know, he trying to be the bad kid that he, he wanna be the kid that's gonna, you know, uh do bad things and, and rebel just to get attention or just cause so they trying to put the iron hammer on him right now too, just as well as they did Kanye. And right now, man, I'm not even gonna lie. I feel like they trying to set examples and lessons. That's why I was saying like what the brother Tariq had to say was very insightful. And, um, you know, he, he, he pretty much pieced it together and he articulated it very well. Like, you know, we got to stick together and we got to be on code because if we ain't on code, man, like we like we dead ass lost. If we not on code and they on code, you know, like it's like a team and y'all scatter like, oh, where the pieces at? Where the puzzle at? What, where we throwing the ball at? What's the playbook? You know? And they got their playbook. If it's a puzzle game, like if you ever watch Survivor, it's a pl if it's a puzzle game, they got their shit together. They know what they finna do. If it's a, a football game, anything like that together, they know the playbook. They know what they gonna do. So we gotta start being on code, start um, being less afraid of one another, embracing one another, you know what I'm saying? Understanding one another and being more aware of the opposition and of, and of other people. Not necessarily speaking hate speech, race speech, and race baiting. But just necessarily saying, like, you know, people that look like you, you ain't necessarily got to think that they going to take you out or knock you off all the time. Like, you know, everybody going through something. So sometimes how about you have, like, just you try to go to go into the situation with a positive outlook or going to the situation or approaching the situation with a positive outlook instead of being the, the aggressor in the situation. If you are the aggressor normally, you know. And see how that turns out for you, especially when you when your brothers like have a little compassion, you know what I'm saying? Try to bite your tongue a little bit more than you would with, you know what I'm saying, a European. But I see it be vice versa. Niggas be, you know what I'm saying, niggas be having a silver tongue and be quick and swift to speak when it be, you know what I'm saying? Like when it's your people, you know what I'm saying? Then I got I'm guessing it hit different, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's more easy for you to, you know what I'm saying, initiate defense mode or, or offensive mode. You know what I'm saying? When it's when it's uh pretty much your people, but 
when it, when it's like somebody else, a European, a, you know, what I'm saying the Asian, like y'all, y'all not even putting on offense or defense. Y'all just kind of like malfunction. It's crazy, but the brothers hit on a lot of good points, man. I just wanted to bring that to the people so y'all can see it and remember. You know, this is a telescope channel. That's what I put it here for y'all to see for. Like you know, what I'm saying like they said it. Now we speaking on it. You feel me? So I, I bring this here for we can be a community and we can stay on code and you know, what I'm saying have some type of. Uh, Communication and verbal camaraderie, you know, that's what I'm trying. That's, that's what I'm trying to have, like a, a pretty much a, a type of community communicate, like communication, um, like to where, like you know, the grassroots can tap in and come here, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can tap in and come here, and everybody can voice their opinion. Cause I like what the brothers doing, you know, and I applaud it, you know. It's uh, it's inspiration for other for other brothers like myself that's coming up, and other brothers that's up under me, and even brothers that's his age and stuff like that. So, man, that's what that's what more um you know brothers like ourselves should be doing. Salute to um you know the reparations march November fifth. It will be tomorrow. You know what I'm saying out there in DC. So y'all y'all tune in to Tariq Radio uh, tomorrow. Y'all see if y'all can't make it down there. If y'all out there in DC, you know what I'm saying go down there to uh to the area you know what i'm saying over there where all the monuments at and everything man go out there and check into Tariq uh radio so y'all can you know find more details and stuff like that about the uh the, the march but man this is a beautiful thing i don't think that we did nothing like this and probably like you know um probably either, if not never but hundreds of years like man this man breaking this man breaking on uh, history right now so salute that brother for doing that man you know what i'm saying i'm all the way with him because you know, my daughter's got to grow up black. I got to, I grew up black. I got to live black. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, my daughter's going to have to live black after growing up black. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing this for this, man, for my wife and my kids. So, for sure, salute to everybody that's watching. I love you guys, man. If you got a family out there, I hope y'all safe. My prayers go out to y'all. Y'all send some prayers back out to us. You know what I'm saying? The good vibes, man. Peace and blessings to the tribe. You know what I'm saying? Like, share, and subscribe. But remember, they said it. Now we speaking on it. I'm Mr. Telescope, and you're now watching Telescope Channel. Hey, what's going on, family and visitors? Peace and blessings to you all. Welcome to the Telescope Channel. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell in the bottom corner. Here at the Telescope Channel, we're going to be diving in from everything from music to religion, sports, and all other current events. Subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated. Let's go get it in.